stuck, incomplete. Full bore, two pendulums. Struggling with deep arms? Man, this video is gonna give you an entirely different perspective. It will show you how your body actually is designed to work so you can unlock the potential and free up the machine and get yourself a 30 yard gain really easily. Let's dive in. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now that we've got your interest, you're gonna absolutely love Sav, Moose, and my double whammy, double pendulum swing. And you'll really get to sink your teeth into this understanding. We have this going on on our premium channel right now. It is so important for you to understand. There's a reason why golf instruction has gone to deep arms in the backswing. It's because so many of you are slicing the ball. But we missed the original reason why you were and we went the wrong way. And we're gonna to demonstrate to you today how amazing it is when you do it the right way. So stay with us. So I've got my seven iron right now. And when I get set up, and if I were to go only with my arms, and this is basically what happens. You've got two operating systems that are happening in your machine. If I wanted to clean the grooves in my club, my brain would freeze the body for me to make these fine manipulations to do these things, you know, to do these things with my club. So when I'm trying to place the club on the ball, my brain is asking the body to freeze. And then what happens is I can't turn. And then so when I do end up turning, the arms get really deep behind me. But the problem is when the arms get too deep, I can't go to the target from here. So now I'm coming back, the club's coming in way too shallow, I gotta pick it up, and I gotta come over the top because I'm in a compromised position. So if I were to you know, unjam my arms but still not turn, then what would happen is that, yeah, my arms are unjammed right here, but the club is pointing way to the right. And for me, as a lefty, way to the right, would cause me to come across and have a weak, slappy fade or slice back to the left. So what's the solution? Well, as we talked about, there are two pendulums in the swing. If I was chipping and putting, the first pendulum, if I only had one arm here and I have a club moving around that pendulum point, you'd notice that the center of that is here, my shoulder. And you notice how the club is cutting the grass right underneath my shoulder. Second pendulum point are my wrists. So notice my hands are staying between my feet right now and I have a full pendulum. There's a hinge on what we call these anatomical snuff boxes. When my trail arm folds, it rotates and hinges everything. And then as it extends on the way down, it brings everything back and then the club passes the hands and then rehinges on the other side. So we don't want this second pendulum to be released prior to the ball. What happens is the first pendulum delivers here and now brings the hands past the ball and now the second pendulum can deliver the release into the direction that we want the ball to go. So if I don't complete the backswing, I don't turn enough, Yes, I got the second pendulum going, but now I'm lifting or bringing back behind me. So I'm either stuck behind me or I'm hitting a slice caught between a rock and a hard place. But if I complete the turn, there's what you'll see Fred Couples do. He used to take the club up, send the arms away from his body, and then crank his body at the top. And now we can come back from the inside. So the simple fact of the matter is all these years, and this is what we've been fighting is with the establishment, is when you try to keep your legs still or steady, as they say, well, then what happens is all you're going to do is collapse your arms into your body. Your arms are designed to do this. This is freedom. 
So if you allow the body to turn, you can get your freedom. You get your cake and eat it too. And now we've got the freedom in the arm club unit and we have the direction to get the ball going at the right place. So from over here, I want to take a draw to the right edge of that, or pardon me, the left edge of that intermediate point. This is left edge. Notice at the top of the backswing, that's left edge as well. Now everything can come back from the inside. Look at where my hands are now. And now the club is going to attack the ball on the way down and from the inside. So we're just going to allow momentum to release that way. So pardon my right-handed swing right now. So here's my left-handed action. There's 180 yards carry for a 58 year old with a blade, whether it's right hand or left hand. Right now I'm nursing an injury I had with Savannah a long time ago when I was being a little too rambunctious on a tennis serve and it came back to bite me in one of my training sessions with Moo. So I'm just gonna you know, swing left-handed for a while and right now I'm enjoying it because my left-handed swing is one club longer than my right-handed swing at the moment. So let's have a look at what that looked like in slow motion and you can see how I'm staying in the direction that I want the ball to go in my takeaway, but I'm not restricting my body. So my body is turned and poised to gather up. So notice at the top of the backswing, everything is out in front of me. That's nice and wide. This would be deep arms. Notice how the whole arm club units bunched up against me. That's freedom. Now the kinetic chain can engage and I can rip right through and get this fabulous draw on my seven iron that flies 180 yards. So let's have a look at Savannah's swing and you'll see exactly what we're talking about in that particular swing and then you'll see the same thing with Moot. Hang on. Ooh, that sounded good, Sav. Nice ball. Holy moly. So you've got a seven iron right now. Seven wood. A seven, pardon me, <laughs> seven wood. Imagine I could hit a seven iron that far. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's a more like moose seven iron. Yeah. So 223 carry, 240 total. That's getting pretty serious. That's a pretty nice seven wood. Yeah, it is. So those are the new dark speeds from Cobra. Yes. And the acoustics on those really sound amazing. Yeah. And you notice that we're, we're working with a Unicor product here. This is the iMini Light, And notice that the distances are very much the same. Mm -hmm. So we've been testing these Unicor products and um, we've noticed that we have a lot of the same numbers that we normally get from the Foresight product. And if you're looking to get a nice indoor facility set up for yourself, well, that I, you know, iMini uh, Light is only $2,700 US instead of 18 grand. Right. So that's a, that's a pretty significant uh, uh, extra that you can put on the interior of your garage to really set everything up properly the way you want it to. Mm -hmm. So if you look at that swing in slow motion that Savannah just did, you'll notice the same elements of the swing. And the thing I wanted to add is it's impossible for you to use ground forces properly when the arms are deep behind you. Right, you're just stuck. So, yeah, because you're so stuck, and so if you take a, a backswing and stop, Sav, so notice how the arms are floating beautifully right here in front of your rib cage. Yeah. If the arms were stuck behind you here, that's what we call deep arms, mm. when you squat in the downswing, then everything's just gonna squat into the ground behind you. That's one of the feelings that I actually can't stand. Like if I get too far inside yeah. in a session, I instantly feel stuck. So I can't imagine how stuck that would feel exactly. in the swing. Just because, just because the original swing was too high and too far to the right, for the righties, it'd be pointed too far to the left. Mm -hmm. And then because we see an, an out to in swing, 
we immediately think that there's a defect with that associated to it. And then we say, no, no, we want to come more inside. So then as you come more inside, you're bypassing both pendulum points in your anatomy. So you're, you're going against the grain of the machine and you're not able to engage that kinetic chain properly and you're denying yourself all these amazing ground forces that are going to allow you to hit seven woods 225 yards. Yeah, because I find the golf industry is more preoccupied with style versus skill and skill looks different on every individual. Yeah. So you can't really... Well, people say, you know, a lot of people say they find my swing a little weird, but when they look at you, they go, wow, that's really nice. But you'll notice we have the same elements in our swing. Yeah, you, and we're also... You just look a little more elegant than me. But we're also, <laughs> like, focused on the same thing, right? So when you have a specific focus and target, yeah. your style is going to look different to everybody. Everybody's style is different, right? So you can't base a swing's outcome on style, which is what that also right. is trying to do in the industry, right? Well, there's one other person that you want to see right now, and, and uh, the latest numbers that Moo sent me, uh, he carried the ball 401 yards uh, between 397 and 402 during his session. And um, so that was very, very impressive. And he wasn't even at full tilt. Like, he was at 145 miles an hour, and he goes... He goes um, clear past 150 miles an hour. So when, when that gets put together, um, actually Cobra was able to send him a couple of decent heads at about six degrees. So we're looking forward to seeing how he does this year with that, with that gear. I was looking at those swings and then I looked at your club head speed and I was like, huh, that's not you going full speed. I know. <laughs> I was like, what the heck is going on? Did, did, you, did you film some of those? Uh, yeah, I filmed one. And, 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 and what, what, what was the distance that came out of that one? I was uh, 365 carry. So okay. Just still warm, I was still warming up. Okay, warming okay. Up, yeah. Still warming up, 365 warm. carry. Yeah, we can just put, we can insert that little bit, that swing clip on, on this. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's see Moo hit a little hybrid. That sounded really good. That stayed straight. That looks amazing. Look at that thing, just like a ticker tape. Keep going mm -hmm. up. 280 carry. Yeah. 296 total with a three hybrid. Look at that ball speed, 171. And your club speed was 123 miles an hour. That was a good tempo. That's sick. <laughs> 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 good tempo. <laughs> Man, that's, that looks amazing. You got to look at that in slow motion. So you'll really see in that delivery of the second pendulum, what's really important for you to understand about that is when you're delivering through to the target and you got this, this big wind-up in your backswing, right, Moon? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we got this big wind-up. The body goes, to the, the brain goes to the ground, uses the ground to get your body out of the way. So the hands come through first, and then from there, the club has no choice but to come back from the inside and to have a proper angle of attack. Mm -hmm. So if we look at impact on that puppy right there, this is one of the things I love about this product. I mean, look at how gorgeous that angle of attack is right there. Nice and smooth. There's impact. There goes the ball. Look at how the club stays along the ground, right? You can see the natural closing of that face. There's the ball coming off the face nice and square. So that's where you got this, you know, amazing. And the path was great. Everything was really super on that. So left from down the line, you can see that when we go to the target, the body's unwinding and making room for the second pendulum to be delivered. If I deliver the second pendulum here, well, it's all over but the crying, <laughs> right? Yeah. So 
everything comes from the inside. And then from there, it's impossible to have an angle of attack that is positive, you know, especially with the irons. Yeah. If you, depending on the ball position with the woods. And then you're always going to come from the inside back through the ball. So if you're coming back from the inside, yeah. you're going to get these freaking gorgeous, tidy little draws. Yeah. And, and even on the fades, that's why when you try to fade the ball, once you have the second pendulum, so many of our students are complaining now that they're having a hard time fading the golf ball. And we got to show them, and that's why you see so many of the guys on tour really focusing on trying to get all the way through the ball in order to get that fade. Yeah. Because if you're just the slightest bit complacent and you release just a hair early at the ball, it's never going to fade. That's right. It's always going to hook. Mm -hmm. So that's why the better players struggle with more of a hooking action. You take the strain out, you deliver deep through the ball, and that turns into a nice, tidy little draw or a tidy little power fade, okay? So, hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you got to sink your teeth into it in a big way. And then, you know, take a look at our premium channel at wisdomandgolfpremium.com. And Moo here is available for some serious speed training. When you're using that two pendulum system, right? Mm, yeah. Immediately, without even trying, for, for so many of you guys out there, who are allergic to the gym like I am, that's why I go to the, the, the catalyst suit, the, you know, you, ha you want some easy hacks for you to get some speed without the strain. No doubt. And just turning that swing into a two pendulum action is going to make a massive difference. Mm -hmm. That combined with so many of the awesome drills that you have with Sav on how to do some proper speed training without getting hurt mm -hmm. is really gonna pay off for you, okay? So check it all out at wisdomandgolfpremium.com. Send us an email for any questions. Get on our, our comment section and uh, enjoy.